Hi, my name's Katie, and we here at Colby Giddings in Dublin, Ohio, love to sell Bernina machines. I have here with me today the Bernina 790, the 590, and the 480, which are the top of the line 7, 5, and 4 series machines. They have a lot of wonderful features that I'm going to tell you about today, and this is one of our beginning training videos. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to thread, how to wind a bobbin, and how to do a lot of the maintenance that's going to keep your machine running beautifully. We're going to have other videos in this series to show you all the basic sewing features and some of the more advanced ones as well, so definitely stay tuned. But in this one, it's going to be all of those basics to get you up and running on your new Bernina. So we're going to start by threading and doing all these steps on the 790. These are the same set of steps on the 790 all the way to the 435. Every 4 series, 5 series, and 7 series machine has the same bobbins and the same set of threading steps and the same maintenance underneath. So we'll be showing you on the 790, but it's going to work for every one of your Berninas. Your machine comes with a few different tools. It comes with a foam disc, which is great to go on the spool pin first to provide a floor for your spool to sit on. It prevents it from rattling around too much. You get three different sizes of spool cap. And what's very nice about this small one is that it's designed to fit into these larger cones of thread. So it fits right inside, and that's what we're going to use today. I'm using an Aurifil 50 weight cotton thread. We love the Aurifil brand of thread because it's a very long staple cotton. These machines really like to use long staple cotton or a polyester thread if you're going to be sewing well. Another thing to note about this spool of thread, like most spools of thread, is that it's cross wound. There's little X's that show that the thread is on that spool in crosses. This is different from maybe a sulky thread that's more straight wound, and you can really see that it's like um, just straight across. The cross wound threads like to go off the spool sideways, so these you'll use on your horizontal spool pin. The other ones, the straight wound, you would sit upright on the vertical spool pin. Most of the time you have a cross wound thread and you'll be using your horizontal spool pin. So let's go ahead and thread this machine. First I'll put my foam disc on. Next, my spool of thread, and then my spool cap. I don't want my spool cap to be so tight that it prevents that thread spool from spinning at all, but just to kind of hold it on there. And I've got some thread coming off already. Next, to thread, the first step is to come across to this thread guide. I go down from the bottom and make sure that I come up where that thread is caught in that first thread guide. Next, I'm going to follow down, and here's where I need to mention that I want to be sure my presser foot is up before I start threading. When the presser foot is up, the tension discs that are right here are open, and that allows my thread to go right inside, and I'm gonna get good tension when I start to sew. As I go around, I'm going to come from right to left through the take-up lever and I'm going to follow those arrows. I can tell I'm in the take-up lever because my thread can come straight out from the machine. If it's fallen down here, it means that I'm not in the take-up lever. This take-up lever will be in the correct position if my needle is already all the way up. To make sure that my needle was all the way up, I don't want to use the hand wheel because I might not get it to the top of its trajectory. I would use my needle down and needle up button to make sure that it's all the way up and my take up levers where I need it. I'll come down and now I have two thread guides to go through. The first one is at the base underneath where the take up lever comes down. So I go through that thread guide and the next one is just in front of the needle. So I make sure that my thread is stuck in front of my needle. Now for my favorite part, the automatic threader. The automatic threader is designed for use with a needle that's size 80 or above. So if I'm using a size 70 needle, I don't want to use the threader because I may damage the hook that goes through the eye. Now this can take some practice, but I know that with a little bit of practice, you'll develop the muscle memory where you can thread your needle with your eyes closed. First, I take the thread in my right hand and I pull it to the side. My goal is for this plastic tab, as I come down, to go right over that thread and put some tension on it. I push my left finger all the way down so that this hook comes forward through the eye of the needle. Next, I take the thread all the way to the right and I 
click it into place. And I usually can hear it click into that hook through the eye of the needle. When I pull my thread back forward, I can see that it's stuck at the eye of the needle and I know it's good to go. And I can let go of both hands at once and I get this beautiful loop behind my needle. I have a long tail of thread here, so I might just cut some of that and pull it through and I'm ready to sew. So let's thread one more time from the beginning so you can see every one of those steps in order. I have my presser foot up. My needle has gone down and back up so that I know it's in that top position. Let's put the presser foot up one more time. And now when I go to thread, I go through the first thread guide, down through the tension discs, up and around and into that take up lever through the first thread guide, through the second thread guide in front of the needle, and then I pull that thread out, I catch it with that little tab, push all the way down, get my thread into that hook, I know it's there, and my needle's threaded. I pull my thread through, cut it on my thread cutter to the side, and I am ready to sew. On the four and five series machines, the threading is exactly the same. I have the spool set up in the same way. I have the same steps of going through this thread guide, down through the tension discs, up through the take-up lever, and the first thread guide. The only difference is that the thread guide in front of the needle, I enter from the left-hand side and pull my thread through so it's right in front of the needle. Then the same thing with the automatic needle threader. I push it all the way down, catch myself in that hook, pull it through, and I am ready to start sewing. So now we're going to wind a bobbin. Whenever I unthread my Bernina, I want to make sure the thread always goes through the same direction that it does when it's sewing. What that means is I'm going to snip my thread back at the spool and pull it through from the needle so that the thread is always going through those tension discs in the same direction. This just prevents me from jagging anything, making, you know, making a, a mess potentially in my tension discs. To wind a bobbin, these bobbins are amazing. They are 80% bigger than a standard bobbin, they have sensors, and they're tapered, so they only go on one direction. If I try to put it on upside down, it won't go on. Very nice. So first, little side note, sometimes when new owners come to class, they turn on their machine and they say, what is that noise? If you've turned on your machine and you hear this noise, it's probably your bobbin winder just knock it back to the side and it's gonna be good to go. So I'll put my bobbin on, sensors down and it fits on just perfectly. I take my thread and I have the same first step in winding a bobbin that I do when I'm threading. It's this first thread guide. So I go through just like before, but now I come around this tension disc and I follow the arrow. I want to be sure that that thread gets snugged into that tension disc. I should see it go in between those two metal layers. I bring the thread across. I don't have to go through any holes. I just follow that arrow around. I go five or six times and I snip my thread on the bobbin winder. I knock it to the left and my bobbin starts to wind. I can control the speed on my screen and I can Go ahead and manually stop it whenever I'm ready to, for that bobbin to be done. Otherwise, it's going to get very full and I'm not gonna have to use another bobbin for a long time. When I'm ready to take it off, I just snip that thread on my nearby thread cutter and my bobbin is ready to go. I know that it's wound correctly because it's wound evenly, it's not cone shaped, it has a good tension to it, it's not spongy. I wanna be sure that it's a good well-wound bobbin before I put it into my machine. There's a few other ways that I can wind a bobbin. If I have already threaded my machine and it's down in the needle, I can use my auxiliary spool pin to wind a bobbin without unthreading my machine. Very nice thing to do. So to show you that, I'm going to take my spool, take my foam disc, and make sure that that's my floor because it gets a little more rattly when I'm using this vertical spool pin. Put my spool up on the spool pin and now instead of going to this first thread guide, which I do, that is where my needle thread is and I don't want my two threads to interact, I'm going to use this thread guide instead. 
So if you were wondering what this little staple is on the top of your machine, it's for winding a bobbin from your vertical spool pin. I get my thread right into that thread guide. I put my bobbin on, definitely need to do that, and you would use an empty bobbin, not one with thread. I go around the tension disc in the same way, making sure I follow the arrow and that my thread is in that tension disc. I wrap it around five or six times. I snip that thread and I can wind a bobbin without unthreading my machine. Now that we have a wound bobbin, we need to put it in the machine. When I open the bobbin case door, I can see my bobbin case inside with a horizontal metal pin and a circular indent on the right hand side. That circular indent is the button to release the bobbin case. When I press that button, the bobbin case comes out. That's the same button that I'll press to release the bobbin from the case. I press it and out comes my bobbin. Just like up above, this bobbin is tapered, so I can't put it in backwards and my thread is always wound the right direction. I put the sensor side in, I take my thread tail and I go through the channel, underneath the wire pigtail, and I tug it until it pops into that pigtail. I'm going to show you that one more time. I put the bobbin in with the sensors in, take my thread tail through the channel, and underneath the metal pigtail. I tug it, and that thread is right between those two metal pieces. This is a properly loaded bobbin case. To put it into the machine, I bring it back down, and I don't want to press on that circular indent because that's just going to pop it right out as I'm putting it in. So I push on the other side until it clicks into place. I take my thread tail and I snip it on my bobbin thread cutter, close the door, and that thread is the exact right length to pick up the first stitch. So let's talk a little bit about maintenance. Your machine in the settings menu has a great maintenance menu with some videos to walk you through if this video isn't enough for you. So we're going to go into settings. On the other machines, you're actually going to hit your home button first and then the gears, but the gears look just like that. Inside of this menu, we're going to go to machine and then to wrench for maintenance. And first, let's talk about oiling. These machines have so many steel components. They are fantastic, robust machines that just need a little bit of regular lubrication to make sure they're running smoothly. So we're going to go into the oiling menu. It's built into your machine and walks through all the steps that I'm gonna show you down below. To oil your machine, we open the bobbin case door and we take out the bobbin case just like before by pressing the button, it falls right out. Next, we take this metal tab on the left and we press it in and that race cover will fall forward. Then I reach in and take my hook out by pulling the center spindle. We're going to oil this machine in three spots. With your machine, you got some kind of Bernina oil pen. They've come up with a couple different versions, so yours might not look just like this, but either way, you have some oil with your machine. It's designed to just give one drop at a time. The first two spots that we're going to oil are these two felt pads on either side of the center spindle. So I'm going to put just one drop on the left one, if my oil pen wants to cooperate, and one drop on the right one, and just make sure that I kind of get, get it nice and lubricated. If you have a little extra that comes out, feel free to take a Q-tip, a tissue, something like that, kind of wipe it up. Um, but they definitely like to have good oil down there. The next place that I'm going to oil, well, first, we should probably clean this out. So I want to be sure that I don't oil on top of any lint. I don't want to create gumminess. I don't want to you know, oil, um, just little pieces of lint. So I'm gonna give it a good brush to make sure that it's nice and clean under there. This is also where I might find any bird's nests. Um, if I ran into some issues while sewing, this is what I'm going to do. Take out that hook, make sure that all the threads are cleaned out under here, give her a good drop of oil. And we're going to put the drop of oil right in this metal track. That's where our metal hook sits, and it's kind of that metal on metal joint that we want to be sure is nice and lubricated. So just a drop of oil right in there, and I do a needle down 
in a needle op just to make sure it spins around. And then I go ahead to put my hook back in. To put the hook back in, it's magnetic, it wants to go into place, but it can be a little bit tricky. I look for this hole in the hook that should line up with the silver dot that's coming down in the, um, the hook holder area. I put the bottom in first to go over that black piece. Wow, and I got lucky, it just set, went right in. You might find that you're kind of at the wrong angle and it doesn't fit, so I get it back there and I spin it around left to right until it really hooks into place. This hook needs to be seated properly for your machine to sew. If it doesn't have any wiggle when you're kind of pushing it around on there, it's seated correctly. I close this cover back up, take my bobbin case, put it back in, and close my door and I'm good to go. Another piece of maintenance that we want to do regularly is to clean our thread catcher. All of the machines, except for the 435, have an automatic thread cutter, and they can get a lot of threads caught underneath that stitch plate that we want to be sure we're cleaning out. Just like the oiling, your machine has a maintenance menu to guide you through cleaning that automatic thread cutter. So we'll go back into settings, we'll go back into machine, back into our wrench for maintenance, and now we'll click on the little brush that's sweeping things away. This menu is interactive, and it really walks you through each of the steps. So we will be removing the presser foot and needle, lowering the feed dog, removing the stitch plate. Next, we're going to get to select this blue link. I want to press it and hear it beep before I hit my scissors. I'm gonna show you what that all looks like down on the machine. So I'm going to follow all of the steps that are written on the screen in the menu. To take the presser foot off for the five and seven series machines with the dual feed, I disengage the dual feed first, and then I remove the presser foot. We're going to talk more about the dual feed and the presser feet in a later video. Then I remove my needle. For the seven series machines, you have a screwdriver that's going to help take out the needle. The fours and fives just finger tighten and finger loosen that screw. I loosen it out, take out my needle, and this is a great chance to toss that old needle and put a new one in when we get the machine back together. Next, I take off my stitch plate. There's a circle right up there. Just press on that and my stitch plate comes right out. As I look around, I've probably been sewing a lot and I get a little, little bit of lint built up under here. It's a great opportunity to brush it out before we go and move the thread catcher. Brush out all that lint. I never, ever, ever want to use any kind of compressed air or canned air, however tempting it might be, because there are a lot of nooks and crannies that I could be blowing that lint into and compressing it in. So I just want to use a brush, or some people even have a little vacuum attachment that you can suck that lint out, but I don't ever want to blow it in. Once I've brushed it away a little bit, I'm going to lower my feed dogs. It's on the side of the machine. And then I hit that blue link, move the thread catcher out, and I hear that beep. I press my scissors button and my machine has opened up the thread catcher where I can get to a few more places where some lint is hiding. Brush off my needle bar, make sure it's nice and clean under there. And then on my screen, I'm going to scroll to step three, touch the blue letters, say move the thread catcher in, hear the beep and press my scissors again. Everything kind of goes back into place. It's nice and clean now and I can put the machine back together. To put the stitch plate back on, I noticed that there are three little legs. I put the left side in first because it has the two legs. So I put that in, hold it down, and just press on the right side, pops right into place. I take a new needle, I stick it up, and I make sure when I put a needle in that I push it all the way up with that flat side back. I want to be sure my needle's all the way in. Finger tighten it and for the 7 series, give it a little turn with the screwdriver. I put my foot back on, engage my dual feed, and I'm ready to go.